just going to give a shout out to Atlantis because Atlantis is connected to Egypt because uh, centuries ago uh, Atlantis was in some sort of war or the island sank which is the story that comes out and the people that was there were more advanced than others and they travelled the world after their island or ship or whatever you want to call it uh, was destroyed and they went to Egypt and Egyptians then told the story of that to someone that Plato knew a couple of uh, hundred or thousand years later and then Plato wrote about it um, but there's a person called Edgar Casey who is a clairvoyant uh, or was a clairvoyant and he spoke frequently of Atlantis and a lot of the things he said came true now he also said that underneath the Sphinx was um, the Hall of Records now the Hall of Records is literally records of absolutely everything and I'll talk about I hope to tell you what Atlantis was and who was in it. Um, I know there's so many stories out there that it was different races and the Lemurians, etc., etc. But we have to go by the ancient texts. Now I know I've said this many a times before, but the ancient texts, hundreds of thousands of these, found in the 1800s, um, and they all have a complete narrative, the brand new text uh, language that actually has. Aramaic, Babylonian, etc., that follow on from that. So, so we have to agree these are real. So now we know they're real. The Anunnaki actually say in their tablets that they build their cities in circles, which is very interesting because when you go to Plato's description, they're in concentric circles. So the Anunnaki actually also build. Now the Anunnaki were around when the Atlanteans would have been around. So. The Anunnaki never wrote about another alien race whatsoever. Um, so we can only then assume that it was the Anunnaki. Now there were different factions at this time. So this was the time when Ra um, was Murduk. Murduk turned into Ra and had issues with Ayana. And all these different locations had different factions of groups uh, Enlil's groups, uh, Enki's groups, and obviously their offsprings ended up creating their own groups, and so there were so many different factions. So what happened is Ayana managed to persuade Enlil. Um, Enki agreed, but he thought no one would know where the nuclear weapons were. So if you watch my other videos, you'll see that there was nuclear weapons brought by Alalula when he first arrived. Um, Enlil knew where they were. So anyway, um, Ayana... Um, managed to persuade them to try and blow up, um, yes, Murduk. However, they didn't succeed. But what they did do with the seven nuclear weapons is wipe out many um, of these type of locations. And we know that because there's here it says researchers find proof of ancient atomic war. That's in Mesopotamia, in uh, India as well. So we know that there was these um, atomic explosions and even the Bible talks about flesh rotting etc etc so we know roughly the time that that happened because of um, researchers plus obviously the time that the book talks about uh, Ayana wanting to attack Ra so the logic is that it was one of those cities that got destroyed by one of those missiles rockets nukes um, and it just makes sense Wow, we now know who the Atlanteans are, thanks to my last uh, video. After 30 years of research, I think I concluded it quite successfully. No one's debunked it. And so the Atlanteans basically were the Ayigi, which were the young Anunnaki, which um, if you don't know who the Anunnaki are, please go and watch my videos or do some research. So basically, the Ayigi were warned, along with um, the other cities that were about to be destroyed, to vacate the, prop the, you know, the cities. Now the cities that the Anunnaki built are in circles and that's exactly what Plato said. Now the Aegi were Anunnaki even though they were the younger ones and they had technology. So when they left and travelled to e.g. Egypt um, they would then tell their story that their, their city's just been, been destroyed uh, which makes sense. So if you're interested in more, finding out more, watch the previous video to this or uh, start from video one onwards because the video you've all been waiting for the greek person plato and his story of atlantis 
Well, you've watched. If you've watched my other videos, you know that I've mentioned who was on Atlantis. In other words, there was a place, in my opinion. However, over the next few videos, I'm going to be showing you why you can't cannot believe what was written uh, by Plato about Atlantis. So even though I sort of contradict myself by saying there was such a place, I'm actually explaining in the next few videos why people are crazy crazy to actually um, read his writings and believe anything else other than that there was a place in this video I'm going to be explaining why I think Atlantis is real and in the next video I'll be explaining why you can't believe 99% of what Plato said now the reason why I believe it's real is because the description of Atlantis is given that it's in concentric circles. If you've watched my previous videos, you know that the Anunnaki built their cities in concentric circles. So is that a coincidence that Plato, some 9,000 years after um, the supposed uh, Atlantis was around, actually guessed that concentric circles was how the Anunnaki built their cities? The actual date here of when Plato wrote about it was 360 BC, but he's referring in his writings to around 9,000 years before that. Now, if you go along with the Emerald Tablets of Thoth, which is an early rendition of what it looked like, the dates match. Why you can't believe exactly what Plato says, basically. I won't go and bore you with who said what and when, but over a very long period of time, 9,000 years, supposedly somewhere in Egypt, there was writings uh, on a wall about Atlantis. <coughs> now, this was then told to someone by priests in Egypt, who then eventually, very long story, loads of different people involved, but basically Plato ended up with the information and then wrote about it. So we're talking a span of 9,000 years to remember everything that someone said. Um, so have a look at this and this is some of the information that's in there now it does some of the information does ring true this is why I said you can't believe 100% so for example where it says that the gods split up the land now if you go back to Sumerian text they did do that they drew straws um, and also in ancient Greece uh, Zeus etc also split up the lands so let's have a listen to how much information was passed down that would have supposedly been written on uh, Egyptian walls. There was a plain which is said to have been the fairest of all plains and very fertile. Near the plain again and also in the center of the island at a distance of about 50 stadia there was a mountain not very high. Okay you can believe that they wrote dwelt that. Dwelt all round making alternate zones of sea and land larger and smaller. Okay you could believe that that was one written. of warm water and the other of cold and making every variety of food to spring up abundantly from the soil. Okay, starting to get a bit, a lot of information there on written walls. Now, Atlas had a numerous and honourable family, and they retained the kingdom, the eldest son handing it on to his eldest son for many generations. And they as you see, I'm going animals, along here. both those which live in lakes and marshes and rivers, and also for those who live in mountains and on plains. This is all supposedly written on a on a wall. Every king surpassing the one who went before him to the utmost of his power. Until they made the building a marvel to behold. Which the palace was situated had a diameter of five stadia. All this, including the zones and the bridge, which... So you really think they put the measurements on a, on a hieroglyphics on a wall in a temple some, somewhere in Egypt that we've never found, that then someone had to remember all of this to give it to someone else that gave it eventually got it to Plato? Seriously? There's just too much information. The palaces in the interior of the citadel were constructed on this wise. In the centre was a holy temple dedicated to Plato and Poseidon, which remained inaccessible and was surrounded... So, so, I mean, this just goes on, as you can see, so we're only halfway through. So, too much information to be true. Before I tell you where I believe Atlantis is, we need to look at where the other researchers go wrong to work out whether I'm the right one and the only person that's ever figured it out. And the reason for that is because they go by Plato. And Plato was around 348 BCE. And Plato talks about Atlantis being 9,000 years before his time. 
So if we have a look here, around 11,000 to 12,000 years ago, we were hunter-gatherers. In other words, Uggs, lots of Uggs as their language. In other words, no written language, etc. came uh, until thousands and thousands of years later, which means everything would be verbal unless we've got proof that there was a written language, even by the Atlanteans themselves, which we don't. So we have to assume then that the information is verbal. Now, in Plato's description, he says that Atlantis is 3,100 miles away from Athens. Now, people go by this, and this is what's crazy, they shouldn't do that, because not, for, not only are these, uh, our ancestors 9,000 years ago were Ugg people, Ugg, 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 Ugg. <laughs> also, Athens didn't actually come into existence until then. So that's a few thousand years, well, 7,000, 8,000, 9,000 years before Athens actually was even founded. So how um, they could work out where Athens was, it would have, wouldn't even been called Athens 9,000 years before that, or 8,700 years, whatever it is, before that. So this is why researchers go way wrong when they're looking at um, everything to do with Plato's writings. And obviously, if you've listened, read or listened to an audio book of Plato's writing, you will come across the fact that he pinpoints things so accurately that there's so much information that would have been passed down Chinese whispers from 9,000 years to an Egyptian priest who gave it to a friend of um, Plato's, who then gave it to Plato. And they described so much in so much detail, smells, colours, depth of lakes. No, absolutely no. Now, the other problem is, um, the here it says in Plato's, the founders of Atlantis were said to be half God, half human. Now, we have to see whether there was any other writings out there. And funny enough, there was. Emerald Tablets of Thoth talk about Ningazida, or Thoth, same person. And obviously, he had offspring. So he was an Anunnaki. He was a god. And he had offspring, which would have been demigods, which would have also been in that era. Now, if you've watched my previous video about who the Anunnaki were, you know I'm referring to the concentric circles. I'm going to run out of time here. Uh, keep watching because hopefully you're now understanding that you can't fully believe everything in Plato's version, which is what a lot of people, virtually everyone, bases their research. Before I tell you where I believe Atlantis is, we need to look at where the other researchers go wrong to work out whether I'm the right one and the only person that's ever figured it out. And the reason for that is because they go by Plato. And Plato was around 348 BCE. And Plato talks about Atlantis being 9,000 years before his time. So if we have a look here, around 11,000 to 12,000 years ago, we were hunter-gatherers. In other words, Uggs. Lots of Uggs as their language. In other words, no written language, etc. came uh, until thousands and thousands of years later which means everything would be verbal unless we've got proof that there was a written language even by the Atlanteans themselves which we don't so we have to assume then that the information is verbal now in Plato's description he says that Atlantis is 3,100 miles away from Athens now people go by this and this is what's crazy they shouldn't do that because not, for, not only are these uh, our ancestors 9,000 years ago were Ugg people, Ugg, 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 Ugg. <laughs> also, Athens didn't actually come into existence until then. So that's a few thousand years, well, 7,000, 8,000, 9,000 years before Athens actually was even founded. So how um, they could work out where Athens was, it would have, wouldn't have even been called Athens 9,000 years before that or 8,700 years, whatever it is, before that. So this is why researchers go way wrong when they're looking at um, everything to do with Plato's writings. And obviously, if you've listened, read or listened to an audio book of Plato's writing, you will come across the fact that he pinpoints things so accurately that there's so much information that would have been passed down Chinese whispers from 9,000 years to an Egyptian priest who gave it to a friend of... Um, Plato's who then gave it to Plato and they described so much in so much detail smells colors depth of lakes no absolutely no now the other problem is um, the here it says in Plato's the founders of Atlantis were said to be 
half god, half human. Now we have to see whether there was any other writings out there, and funny enough, there was. Emerald Tablets of Thoth talk about Ningazida or Thoth, same person, and obviously he had offspring, so he was an anarchy, he was a god, and he had offspring which would have been demigods, which would have also been in that era. Now, if you've watched my previous video about who the Anunnaki were, you know I'm referring to the concentric circles. I'm going to run out of time here. Uh, keep watching because hopefully you're now understanding that you can't fully believe everything in Plato's version, which is what a lot of people, virtually everyone, bases their research. As I get closer to telling you where I believe Atlantis is, I really need you to understand why I got to that conclusion, because if I just told you where it is, you'd be going, that doesn't make sense. But as you've already seen in my previous video, I prove that you, the other researchers, unfortunately, have been following Plato and therefore have got it wrong. So the reason why I feel I've got it right is because I've gone through these steps. So basically, who were the players at the time? Now, if you watch my one of my earlier videos, I prove again who the Atlanteans were no one's debunked it do we have any records of destruction 9,000 years ago well actually we do and that's another reason why I believe uh, we know where it is and w where were the players really important because obviously where the other people were on earth relates to where Atlantis is believe it or not and have we found anything under the water in other words anything sunk yes we we can't trust Plato's version because so many of his claims are easily debunked, such as Atlantis being 150 miles away from Athens when Athens wasn't even around for another 8,000 years. Same for the name of the Pillars of Hercules. He didn't arrive until 8,000 years later. But we can say a few things ring true. 1. City built in circles. We know the Anunnaki did this. 2. It was sunk. Emerald Tablets of Thoth agree with this. 3. Some of the people from Atlantis went to Egypt. Emerald Tablets of Thoth also agree with this. They are the only things we can say for sure. Everything else is made up as a huge story, as I've proven in my previous videos. So, where do I think Atlantis is? I believe it is here. The reasons why are... Number one, the name Heraclean was given to the sunken city because divers found one tablet with that name on. They found other tablets with that name on, but because Heraclean was mentioned in another tablet found in Egypt, they assumed it was that city. Number two, researchers have agreed it was a city that sank and that they say that 64 ships sank at the same time. Number three, the majority of it was sunk. Researchers state the hard clay turned rapidly into liquid and the buildings collapsed into the water. This would match with Thoth's account in the Emerald Tablets of Thoth. Ships, however, would not have sank if it was just the clay that went soft. Something attacked the ships. Number four, the ancient Sumerian texts that have been translated talk about a pyramid war around eight to 9,000 years ago where Iana, or Inanna, went around in her chariot, destroying cities from above. Number five, all of the Anunnaki who were there at the time all stayed local to Mesopotamia and Egypt. None of them were at that time in South Africa or anywhere else. Number six, the Anunnaki built their cities in circles and there is no record of any other advanced race on the planet ever other than the Anunnaki. Divers found walls in circles. The actual words are, the city extended all around the temple and a network of canals in and around the city must have given it a lake dwelling appearance. Number seven, Ningazida, who was the Anunnaki that designed the pyramids, see Lost Book of Enki and Emerald Tablets of Thoth, built Atlantis and being the master builder he was, Atlantis would have been more sophisticated than the other cities. Ningazida, Thoth, was also warned off Atlantis before Ayana attacked trying to kill Marduk. He left and took his Anunnaki tech with him to Egypt. See the Emerald Tablets of Thoth. Number nine. Atlantis was within walking distance of Egypt, but at the time Marduk, who was also known as Ra, was the leader in Egypt. Number ten. Divers found statues of Amun, who we know as Ra, who was Marduk as the Anunnaki. Why him? 
and not any of the other gods or pharaohs from that dynasty. Number 11. The great temple at Thonos Heraclion was that of Kernishnu Thoth, as we call him. Number 12. Plato said that to get to Atlantis you need to go through the Pillars of Hercules. However, we know they were not called that 9,000 years ago, but where Plato is talking about is an actual place later named that, the place you would have to pass through to get to Heraclion. Number 13. Over time, the remaining part of the city finally collapsed into the sea. Number 14. Heraclion is now actually informally known as Egypt's Atlantis.